Hey, so welcome to session three. In this session, we're going to talk about like where spiritual gifts are located in the Bible. Now, in the first session, we talked about kind of this foundation of what spiritual gifts are. In the second session, we talked about the fact that spiritual gifts are a matter of grace. You don't earn it. It's not because you have a certain position. It's because God has foreordained you for a specific purpose in the body of Christ. Now, in this session, we'll talk about where spiritual gifts are actually located in the Bible. So let's get started. So when we talk about where spiritual gifts are located, the majority of spiritual gifts mentioned in the Bible are found in three key chapters, Romans chapter 12, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and Ephesians chapter 4. Now, there are several secondary chapters that also provide other important details like 1 Corinthians 7 or 1 Peter chapter 4. But based on the primary three, we find the following lists of spiritual gifts. So let's start here. Romans chapter 12 speaks to several gifts, the first being the gift of prophecy, the second being the gift of service or ministry, the third being the gift of teaching, the fourth being the gift of exhortation, the fifth being the gift of giving, so like contributing things and a gift spirit of generosity. The sixth being a gift of leadership. And the seventh found in Romans 12 is the gift of mercy. Now, in Romans, excuse me, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, we see more gifts. We see the gift of wisdom. We see the gift of knowledge, the gift of faith. We also see the gift of healing and the gift of miracles. We see the gift of the discerning of spirits, the gift of tongues, the gift of the interpretation of tongues, the gift of apostle, the gift of helps, the gift and the gift of administration. Now, when we go to Ephesians chapter four, some of those same gifts are repeated, but they add a couple others. They add the gift of evangelist, the gift of pastor and teacher. The main purpose of discovering gifts is to ensure that we're positioned called, ordained, commissioned, or licensed to fill any office, but it's according to how we've been gifted by the Holy Spirit. So in, in case in point, like if you are given the gift of the apostle, then you should function in the role of the apostle, or vice versa. If you're given the role of an administrator, you should make sure you have the gift of administration and so on. Now, I need you to understand that the list above is not a complete listing. There are at least five other gifts mentioned in the New Testament and several others that are not plainly listed in the Bible, but upon surveying the congregation are clearly gifts. So some of those gifts are the gift of celibacy, the gift of voluntary poverty, the gift of martyrdom, the gift of hospitality, the gift of being a missionary, the gift of intercession, the gift of deliverance or exorcism, and then lastly, the gift of music. Now, there are some gifts that are hyphenated gifts. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, the gift most often listed, listed as pastor and teacher should be written pastor-teacher. This gift is the only dual gift in the Bible. It's the one gift that has two distinct dimensions. So within almost every one of the 27 spiritual gifts are found a wide range of variations and degrees. The gift will operate at different levels and in different individuals. Now, though they exercise identical degrees of faithfulness to their task, the results may vary due to the distinction of the calling. Variations and degrees as the gift themselves are distributed at the discretion of God. So just as the parable of talents, God gives gifts to each of us according to our measure of faith. And when the gifts operate properly, Christians who have different degrees of the same gift should have no cause for jealousy because we're called to work together in harmony within the body. So my brother, my sister, after hearing this list, I want you to understand that you will have one of these gifts or more of these gifts, and it's your responsibility to not try to compare your gift to someone else's, but to walk in the gift you've been given that ultimately the will of God has done through your life. This ends session three. We look forward to seeing you in session four.